Hey guys, it's Mrs. Lance here, and we are going to go uh, be working through the Chaco Break tutorial for Multimedia Fusion 2 Developer. When you go to open the program, you want to make sure that you have the correct demo selected, so Multimedia Fusion 2 Developer, and hit Launch Demo. When you get to this screen, I'm going to go ahead and leave this check mark because I want this demo or this tutorial to pop up. You can leave that check mark and say Continue, and that will open up your workspace for Multimedia Fusion and this then is the tutorial that we're going to be working through. So I'm going to move this off to the side so I can show you my full screen while we're working through this tutorial. I suggest that you have the tutorial open um, as you're following along with the video because I might refer to it once in a while or want you to read something that I'm not going to cover in this video but because it does have a lot of extra um, hints and tips that you should be aware of. Uh, that I won't necessarily be covering in this tutorial. So when you first launch MMS2, this is, gonna, this is going to be what you see. We have our workspace area and our properties toolbar. And I'm going to go ahead and close this workspace toolbar because we don't really need it right away. Um, and then your library toolbar will show up down here at the bottom. We, we will be using some things out of the library, so I'll go ahead and leave that open. And just keep in mind, if you ever do want to bring that workspace toolbar back up, you can just go to View, Toolbars, and Workspace. So if any of these work or if any of these toolbars are not showing up, make sure you go to view toolbar and select the proper toolbar that you're looking for. Okay, we're going to begin creating our first application. So we want to click on the new icon in the toolbar, which is this little folded piece of paper up here. So when we click on the new icon, we have this application one um, window pop up in our workspace. So you can see that we created a new application. You can also see that Multimedia Fusion 2 Developer has automatically created a frame in the application. This frame will contain the first level of our game. And this new window that popped up called Application 1, this is called the Storyboard Editor. This is one of the several editors contained in MMS2. We won't be exploring them all right now, but for the moment we are simply going to enlarge the storyboard editor so that it takes um, the whole available space in the main window. In the main window, so to do so, you can simply double click um, at the top of the title of the window, and that, as you can see, kind of spreads it up into our entire work. Okay, in step two, it's going to tell you to locate your mouse on the big one button in the storyboard window and click. We'll go ahead and click there. This will open the frame editor for editing the first frame of your application. Remember, your game is your application. This is the first level of your game that we're going to be working on right now. So now you see the frame editor, the white area in the middle is the place where we are going to drop the different elements of the game. This is the play field where all of the action will take place when the game is run. Okay, now we're moving into step three of the tutorial where we'll be dropping the first object. So we want to create a breakout style game. In a breakout game, you typically have a ball, a bat, and some bricks. In this tutorial, we want to create a super breakout game with impressive graphics made in 3D. First, we need to find the graphics for our game. You will not have to draw the graphics on the screen. Um, because they've already done that for you. So all the graphics of the game we're going to create are contained in a library. Um, libraries are a set of objects ready to be used in MMS2 Developer. So how do we locate the graphics for the library? Um, they can be found in the library window down here at the bottom of your screen. There you will see a tree with folders. So when it says a tree, that just means this plus um, button that expands into more folders. And we need to click on the tutorial folder, and this should, uh, da, 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 there you see a tree with folders in it. Click on the tutorial folder. This should display a set of names in the main display library. Locate the Chaco Break tutorial line and double click to open it. And now you'll see all these images that are available in the library. Okay, now we're going to drop our first object. So first of all, locate in the library the object named Sugar Vertical 1. So if you mouse over it and hold your mouse there for a second, you can see the entire title of the object. Click on it and drag with holding the mouse button down onto the white area of the frame and release the mouse. You will now see a large object. Click on the object, drag it to the left side of the frame. This object is the border for the left of your play area. So you're going to click and drag this object to the left side of the frame. So make sure it's fit all the way to the top all the way to the side. 
actually wouldn't want to arrange it so it's all the way at the bottom because we're going to be putting a different color on the top. So now we're going to do the same thing, only clicking and dragging out the sugar horizontal line. So click on the sugar horizontal object and drag it to the top of your screen, about in the middle of your frame. Then we're going to do the same thing with sugar vertical 2. Click and drag that out onto the frame and place it on the right side of the frame, making sure everything lines up correctly. So once you've drag and dropped all your pillars, you should have something that looks like this. And the objects we have just dropped contain more than meets the eye. They are actually animated. So to see the animation, you have to launch the application. To do so, locate the Run Frame icon in the icon bar near the top of your display and click on it. So the Run Frame icon is this button up here. So if we click on that, that kind of just gives us a quick little demo of what our application looks like so far. And my computer is a little slow, so it took a little while to pop up. But there you can see our pillars are actually animated, so pretty cool. Okay, now we're moving right along into step four. So in uh, step four, we're going to add the ball. Every breakout game needs a ball. Now that we know how to add objects, let's drop one on our playing field. Locate the object called Ball Golden in the library. So I scrunched down the window of my library so we can pull that back up here. And locate the object called Ball Golden right here. Then using the method in the previous chapter, drag and drop it into the middle of the frame. If you click Run Frame, you now see that the ball does not move, it is static. So click on your Run Frame, and you'll see our ball is added to the white space, but it is static at the moment, so we need to add some motion to the ball. Um, it won't move until you teach your ball how to move. In other words, we're going to assign the ball movement property to our ball and define how that movement will work in our game. Each object has a number of properties that define its behavior during the game, which um, tells it how it's moved, how it's going to be displayed, etc. To access the properties of an object, you just need to open its properties in the property window. So here's our properties window. So by clicking on the object, we open our properties in the property window. Um, do it and you will see the properties in the property toolbar. The properties are sorted by genre with little tabs at the top of the window. Locate the one called movement. So these are our different genres at the top of the window. And we want to, if you mouse over them, you can see the different names. And we want to locate the one called movement. Click on it, then locate the type and click on it. So here's our type and so far it's at static. And so we want to click on the drop down um, where it says static and select Bouncing Ball Entry. So the one right below it, we're going to check Bouncing Ball. We have chosen the effect, a bouncing ball movement, to our object. As you can see, other types of movements are available. We'll come back to them later. Once the movement is selected, its properties are available in the property toolbar. So you can see all the different properties that are assigned to this ball at this point. So we can adjust different things in this property toolbar. Let's set the initial direction to zero for the time being and speed is at 60, so if we say try movement, you can see how this is how fast our ball is going to move, be moving. So we're going to leave our speed at 60. So speed at 60, deceleration makes the ball slow down. Um, for our breaking up game, we do not want the ball to stop, so leave this property at zero. Moving at start should be clicked. We want the ball to move when the game begins. Number of angles indicate um, how many angles the ball can have. The different settings are 8, 16, and 32. Leave it at 32. It will make the game more interesting. The randomizer property adds some randomness to the bounces. So sometimes the ball will not bounce in the, in the correct direction if it's set to too high. For this game, you may want to reduce this parameter a little. So it's at 20, and it says reduce it a little bit. So maybe let's take it down to 15. And if you can't get that there, we can type in 15. Here we go. Um, security property is used to prevent a ball from getting stuck in a bouncing pattern loop. Uh, it defines the number of times the ball will bounce before quitting the loop. So it doesn't say to make any adjustments to security, so we won't. After the tutorial, you can learn a lot and have some fun by experimenting with these different settings and noting the effects that they have. So now click on the initial direction property. As its name indicates, it defines the direction the ball will take when the game begins. 
As default, the ball goes off to the right of the screen. Um, of course, we must modify this if we want the ball to come towards us, or better, towards the brick so that it bounces before coming to us. With your mouse, select the arrows as below. So we want to, in order to select the arrows, you click on these different squares, and we want to set up arrows here, here, and here, and also arrows in positions 6, 5, and 4. You can kind of see if you mouse over these different squares, um, they give you a number here. So we should have one at 10, 11, and 12, and 6, 5, and 4. So when more than one direction is selected, MMS2 chooses a direction at random with the selected direction. Okay, moving into step five, we have just defined the ball movement of the ball object. You can run the frame again by clicking run frame, run frame, and this will kind of demonstrate what our ball looks like in our game. And so you saw it take off the screen there, and as you could see, it just kind of disappeared. So now we need to tell the ball to bounce off of these um, vertical pillars here. And in order to do that, we're going to be using our event editor button. So let's click on the event editor. Again, if you mouse over it, you can see this is the event editor. So click on the event editor, and you should have a display that looks like this. Let's think about what we want to achieve. So we want the ball to bounce when it collides with the vertical and the horizontal bars. If we use the name of the objects as we saw them in the frame editor, the sentence becomes, when the object, ball golden, collides with sugar vertical one, then the object should bounce. So that's basically what we need to tell in this condition. Um, a condition is a way to determine when something has happened. Here our condition is when the object collides with the vertical pillar. Um, the next part is the action. So now we have to tell it what we want it to do once it's met the condition. So here our action is ball object ball golden bounce. Um, an identical condition action sentence should be constructed for the other objects also. So let's create our conditions and actions in MMS2. With your mouse, click on the new condition line. On the, on the screen, the new condition dialog box opens up. Um, this, the content of this box is simple. It shows the objects we are using in the game so that we can choose which objects we want for the condition. You will find the objects. Right now we'll want to concentrate on the ball golden object for our game ball. Now with the right mouse, click on the you click on the ball with your right mouse clicker and then go to collision and another object. So we want to say when the ball collides with this other object, so let's choose the vertical two first and say okay. We've just created our condition. We're saying the collision between the ball and this pillar. And that's our condition. So when the, when the collision happens, now this is where we tell what action we want to take place. So we're going to locate our golden ball here, right click, and the square below it, and you'll see a whole bunch of different options that um, are for the action that we can tell our ball to have. And we want our ball to bounce once it collides with the pillar. So now we need to do the same thing and set up the ball to collide. When it collides with the vertical pillar, we want it to, want it to do the same thing. We want it to bounce. So now we choose the vertical pillar and we say bounce. And also again, right click on the ball, collisions, another object. And this last pillar, as our condition here, we want our action to be bounce. And we're good. So now when we go to run our frame here, we can see the ball bounce off these different pillars. So you see it bounced off the pillars, but then it disappeared in the bottom of the screen. So that's going to be our next step, is to make sure we keep the ball in play. And I'll cover that in the next video.